yeah, we'll we'll have this next lot a uh, lot of time here instead of a main message. I've got a few brothers who are willing to share testimonies again. Um, so we'll we'll do that. I'll I'll just start here by reading a couple verses in First John one. It says, "What was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at." and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. And the life was manifested, and we have seen and testify and proclaim to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was ma manifested to us. What we have seen and heard we proclaim to you also, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. These things we write so that your joy may be made complete. Oh, I know John was John was probably m mostly thinking about the fact that they had they had physically seen the Lord after the resurrection before and after the resurrection they had handled him or touched him physically and and yet he's testifying that what what was manifested to them uh, is is worthy of being proclaimed and and it helps others who have manifested or who have experienced the same thing to have fellowship with one another uh, and it and it brings joy um, and so with that with that in mind I'd just like to let these four brothers uh, share whatever it is that they um, so something they've experienced in their life and you're welcome to do it from your seat or up there whatever you're most comfortable with Maybe Brother Joe Yoder said he's willing to start. Good morning. This is an, another day the Lord has made, and I was blessed with the things that we already heard. And isn't it true that we, the road is still narrow? The road, the way is still a narrow way. Are we on this side of the Atlantic Ocean or or the other side? Like we heard, we still have an enemy here. But uh, what I want to, I don't want to take a lot of time here. Just to, I guess my testimony is, or I could witness that uh, we have a firm foundation, Jesus Christ. And that is what, what I want to talk a little bit about. I have a need to build on that foundation. One thing that got me thinking this way is uh, last Sunday Dwayne had uh, another message on the Sermon on the Mount and he was standing beside a wall that had a big crack. I've seen the picture of it. I was, And he was talking about this big crack in the wall. And he said, he's sure it's not the fault of the foundation so there's no fault in our foundation either if we I, I would testify that I probably have some cracks in the walls that I'm the wall that I'm building I have to keep trying to build it up but there's nothing wrong with the foundation he said it the other way he thinks that the fold of that crack on that wall that he saw was the foundation. But what I'm saying is our foundation ha doesn't have any faults. The foundation that we're be building on Jesus Christ don't have any faults. That's, that's my experience in life. But if the wall has a crack, it's, it's me that's the problem. So. So the firm foundation and I'd like to read a little bit in Matthew uh, 24 of uh, what it says in the word about uh, Matthew 24 a couple of verses starting in 32 verse 32 Jesus said from the fig tree learn its lesson as soon as its branches become becomes tender and puts forth leaves. Its leaves, you know that summer is near. 
So also when you see all, all these things, you know that he is near that at the very gate. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. The last verse is what I wanted. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. This is the word of God saying, my words are firm. The promises of God are sure. That's, I guess that's my testimony. That, that's what I experience and as I live from day to day and, uh, and I have a few phrases here that, that uh, I hear people talking sometimes or saying, you know, you meet a person who says, I'm too blessed to be distressed. I'm too anointed to be disappointed. I'm too grateful to be hateful. So we have something we can look to. And that's the only way that we will uh, subdue the enemy, so to speak, is looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Now, I'd like to read a little bit in, in Hebrews 12. Uh, verse 14 in Hebrews 12 verse 14 it says pursue peace with everyone and holiness without which no man will see the Lord see to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God that no root of bitterness spring up and causes trouble and through it many be, may become defiled. See to it that no one becomes like Esau, an immortal and godless person who sold his birthright for a single meal. You know that later when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected for he found no chance to repent, even though he sought, it, sought the blessing with tears. So that's something that we can, we need to continually uh, look diligently unto, diligently unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And the reason is so we don't fail the grace of God. And, and as we continue, uh, that's my testimony, it's just, God's foundation or God is God is faithful we can look to him and he, he, will, he will not fail us but if there's a failing it's on, it's on my part and uh, with this all said I'd like to sing a song at 322 in the in the hymn in the hymnaries
um, just share a couple elements of <clears throat> um, part of like my conversion or I say part of my conversion my turning to God um, I think there's a difference between wanting uh, realizing a lot of truths like that there's a creator and that there's a judgment and caring about those things and wanting to serve God and wanting to please God and a difference between that and then um, following Jesus and I think I uh, it took me a that I decided I decided way back there that I wanted to follow God and that there was um, uh, that there was going to be judgment to, uh, that I was going to face judgment for my actions and I, I made a lot of changes in my life and, and lived a um, a pretty radical life for a long time before I uh, realized the specific thing of, of uh, living this the type of life that Jesus taught us that we needed to live uh, to follow him but, but way back there there was a time when I was trying to escape um, escape life and just have fun and um, I want to be really careful that it doesn't seem like I'm saying this was a, a good thing or a positive thing. I think God used it for good. I think it's a very bad thing, but I used to um, uh, intentionally um, intentionally put chemicals in my body to, to, to alter my mind. One way you can do this is you can drink alcohol. That will alter your mind. I, I, um, one time I ate... Um, ate a certain mushroom that, that altered my mind. There's different ways people want to not be sober. And so, um, and it, it can, um, it can make you have, be really, really drunk. And really, for some reason, people want to escape reality and do this thing. And I, I used to do that. And, um, so I, um, one time, <clears throat> at one time when I was doing these things, it, it creates confusion, but I was, um, I was confused and I was searching uh, and I was in Arizona running with these <clears throat> running with these people and I was in this coffee shop and these strange things were happening and I was confused and and I was like are they, I didn't couldn't tell if there were spiritual things happening or if I was just it was just the, the drunkenness messing with my mind but I I got I started thinking oh is, is God gonna be mad at me if I'm here and I, I shouldn't be here and I I tried to leave and this this guy named Edward followed me out of this of this coffee shop and he was trying to get me to come back inside uh, where the where this bad stuff was happening where these bad people were doing bad things and I was confused and and I I, th I thought oh these guys this guy might be the devil these people might be doing bad things but I, I just wasn't sure and I, maybe maybe it's just the, the, the drugs that I put in myself that are are messing me up and um, and uh, I was asking him questions, and he was kind of being deceitful. And we went through this list of questions, and then, uh, and then finally, and finally, I tripped him up, and I figured out that he was working for the. This guy really was working for the devil. These people that I was with really were bad people. He had, he kind of he slipped up, and I caught him, and I was like, aha! Oh, I knew it. Hear that? And he smiled. And he's like, okay, you got me. Yeah, that's who we are. Uh, um, he's like, you know, maybe he said, come inside, or, oh no, he, he, he smiled and he said, um, like, he, okay, you figured out who I am, who I am, and you want to go now, but, but you'll be back. Like, the devil was telling me you'll be back. And I was like, no, I, I understand now, you're bad, and I'm out of here, and I'm not, I'm not going to be friends with you anymore. And it was so dramatic and so real to me, I, I, I ran away from that guy, and I expected, I thought a car was going to pull up with all the good guys. The Christians were going to be inside this car, and they were going to say, we saw you made the right choice, buddy, get in. Come, come join our side. And I, I went out, and I was like, expect, like, where's the good guys? And no, no car pulled up. And I, w I found a church, and I went up to the church and knocked on the door, and nobody answered. I was real confused, but... So fast forward several months later, I, I went back to Texas, back back home to Texas. That had all happened in Arizona. I was back in Texas, and um, and I was with some other friends and and doing these same things uh, with new friends, and um, and with with my mind all messed up, I started to 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 doubt that what I was doing was wrong. God didn't like me being here, and I, I got up and I left these friends again, and I, I was walking out in this field, just all confused, um, 
not sure what was happening and I, I think I was hearing from God or the Spirit of God or maybe my conscience at that time but um, so one of my friends that I had been with came out to look for me you know and uh, he was like come back buddy and I was like I don't know if I can go back I, I think I need to turn to God I, I think you guys are bad maybe and and um, and like this and anyway the guy this this guy he he smiles at me and he says um, I'm glad you came back buddy and I was like and it was I don't know how to explain it it seemed to me at the time that even though this was a whole different person there was that he was the same guy who smiled at me and said you'll be back and I said no I'm not coming I'm not gonna be back and here I and I didn't go back to Arizona I went I went somewhere in Texas whole different people whole different place and th this guy smiled at me and said I'm glad you came back buddy and it was like the devil smiling at me he's he and like I came back and I was confused I thought but I didn't I left those guys but I I realized that um, uh, it was this thing Dijon was saying it's the same enemy he, he's on both sides of the of all the oceans and uh, he's in Texas and he's in Arizona and I had um, I had gone looking for him again this this enemy I it was um and I, and I, I went looking for him and I found him um, it, so uh, in both places uh, I'd have this feeling that I was being offered something uh, being made an offer and I was saying no I was saying no to this offer and it was real confusing because I, I didn't understand what the offer was what I was saying no to but something was compelling me and I was saying no and I, I think I was saying no to the enemy to his offer for my soul um, anyway <clears throat> I left that guy and, and kept going through this through this field in my in my um, severely drunken state and um, I, I had several ideas come to me um, I thought I was dying and uh, and and my my life like played before me I could see all my my steps I was I, I was wanting I felt like I was I was wanting God I was wanting to go to heaven um, I didn't want to go to hell and I felt like it was like God was telling me or I was getting this answer back like no you're 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 outside you're not coming to heaven you don't you don't get to come to heaven you're going to hell and which is terrifying you're gonna you're gonna be separated from me and uh, and there was these thoughts like well that's unfair but I didn't know I, di I didn't have a chance I didn't get it and and I felt like um, like I, I got to see all the all the choices that I was making throughout my life especially the ones I had been making recently and he showed me like how like in each of these choices he was God was calling me God was making offers to me God was saying um, stop being selfish and seek me out don't 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 make this selfish choice and I could and, and I could see like oh every time like oh I did have a chance oh he did give me an opportunity and every time I, I made this selfish choice this prideful indulgent choice um, and I could see now that it was like it was he was and somehow I knew that it was like toward him and I chose to go away from him and he revealed to me that like I like as though as I was dead and where I was was as far away from him as for me to a star and he showed me that I had taken every step intentionally away from him and that I had opportunities to take steps toward him and I I didn't take those steps toward him I stepped away from him through selfishness through fear or, or whatever um, <clears throat> and um, and I was crying out oh God give me please give me another chance if you if you let me live uh, this is a classic if you let me live I'll serve you the rest of my life I'll give you my life and um, I, I had this imagination like God God had a list of all the kind of lives that could be lived and they were all taken and he, he said um, there, there's nothing available buddy it, it was as though he said there's just it's all taken there's nothing available buddy and I was like oh please anything and he said well there's one there's one spot here there's one life here but it's a it's a really bad life um, Max I thought of you it's cannon fodder this is a you don't want this life this guy's gonna work hard and his stuff's gonna be taken away he's his friends are gonna um, his friends are gonna fire at him 
he, he's going to be innocent and be treated like he's guilty. All, all, these, all these things was bad. And I, I was just so desperate for life, for an opportunity to live. I didn't want to die. I didn't want to go to hell. I, w I wanted a chance to be able to, to be reconciled to God. And I just said, I'll, I'll take it, whatever it is, any kind of life. I, it doesn't matter. I'll just, I, please give me a chance. And, um, and I, so when I said, I'll take it, uh, I'll take, uh, uh, I chose that. Um, I realized all the other, the, the other ones that were available were like successful, rich people, uh, famous people, popular people, all these, all these like good, good things that people want in life. And I saw that those were all bad things. Those were all the people who were, who were firing on others to get to the top. And uh, this guy at the bottom was actually the only good one, the only good life that was available. This guy was, though he was treated badly, he was also uh, um, free from guilt. He, he was guiltless. And, uh, and I was like, oh, wait, that was, and I, you know, this was still my carnal mind. I thought those were all good. I had thought those were all good, and this one was bad. And then, then when I said, I'll take it, like, I just, I was like, oh, that was, that was the best one in the whole pile. And uh, it was as though, like, I had this moment with God, and he was like, yeah. I was like, you gave me the best one. Uh, and I didn't even see it, and he was—he was like, he was like, yeah, and um, uh, so that was really special um, for me to realize that. And uh, anyway, that then I then I left them, I left those people, and I immediately went and became a Baptist, and I had to put away that testimony, that that, that whole, and that was all just that must have just been drug-induced drunkenness, because that didn't make any sense. The Baptist taught me that in order to to go to heaven or be reconciled to God. I just needed to receive Jesus as my Savior. And for sure, nothing that I did was going to affect um, what, how God thought about me. So that, that whole testimony just didn't make any sense. And I, I just put it away. And then, and, and, and then as I've come to realize, God calls us to, um, to, to be like Jesus. Uh, and, this, and He wants us to live this kind of life of a guy that, that potentially is going to do right and get abused and take it patiently um this is the, the life jesus lines out for us and and to take um and i was like oh way back there th that was that vision that i had was was um at least congruent which what with what i think um the government um the gospel uh really is and so that's that's been a blessing to me these last years like realizing like oh i wasn't uh that m maybe that Maybe that really was God. It, that special um, experience that I had really was from Him. <clears throat> I, so a couple points I want to want to make. One of them I, I kind of already touched on was that that was how that Arizona and Texas is this, the same the same enemy, and really the enemy. Like whatever wherever you go, whatever we do, like are we are we making these choices? Uh, that are toward God, they're, they're the harder choices, they're the less comfortable choices, they're often embarrassing uh, choices that don't make us popular uh, and are harder, but, uh, but we know these are the things that, these are the things that please God. And the easy ones and the ones that feel good and are fun um, can often be a a away from Him. I thought of, um, I thought of um, what you really, that cannon fodder thing you said, Max, really got me. I, I, I thought, like, well, people, I think that's what God calls us to, to be. Like, um, that's, who Je that's who Jesus was. Jesus, like, as ugly as it sounds, Jesus was cannon fodder. Like, he, he didn't come to be the glorious king. He came to be the, the most, uh, like, so, dis like, the most wonderful th person to ever be, like, most... Uh, despised, um, tortured, and 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 betrayed, and um, shamed, and just just awfully treated, and he he calls us. So the gospel is him calling us to do the same. He's saying like, th this is what I've done. I I've come and I've just been despised and I've been rejected, and and he did that, for in uh, because that was the way to get some people to repent and some people to turn and to follow him uh, Je Jesus said uh, he who is forgiven much loves much well the only way to be forgiven something is if somebody else suffers a loss uh, like if 
if Teo lent me a bunch of money and I couldn't pay it back and he forgave me and I'd be like really really thankful and really devoted to Teo and really love him a bunch like the only that love that I have for Teo that devotion I would have for Teo only came because he paid for it he suffered a loss He's, he, he suffered the loss of, of getting paid back and that's what God has done. God has suffered this loss and He's not looking to be paid back. He, he just wants people to, to, realize, to realize what they've done and, and to devote themselves to Him. And uh, he, that's what He's calling us to do. Are we willing to, take, to do what He did, to do, to do what He's doing, to join Him in suffering loss, suffering, being treated unfairly. And, um, and if we do... Uh, if we um, if we forgive much, we can compel others. Uh, others can be compelled to love, to love him. Um. <clears throat> and then the last thing was, I <laughs> I thought of the element of Dijon's story as well. He said, when they when they said, "Oh, you, you suffered so much. Welcome." <laughs> into America, instant citizenship, you know, come right in uh, because, of, because of your suffering. Like, no, no, we don't need, that's all, we've heard enough. Yeah, you, you, you've, you, had, you suffered for a good cause, welcome in. And I just think like, the, oh, that's um, well done. Now, good and faithful servant, good and faithful thing to be good. The good thing and the thing to be faithful in is, is suffering uh, for his sake. Um, joining with him in that and for those who do like that's what um, it will merit uh, not pay for but merit um, being being welcomed in to, to his kingdom someday thank you God bless you good morning again just want to greet you all in the name of Jesus as well <clears throat> Um, yeah, and I wanted to say, and I guess Max can hear this even if he isn't here, but uh, amen to what he was sharing. And I've, I've uh, sometimes when Max speaks, I think him and I have quite a few struggles that are similar, which maybe all of us do, I don't know. Uh, but after he was talking about that story and before he he brought it personal I, this is where he's going I know I know the struggle I know how it is I feel unworthy and wonder like how why why is it so much easier to be gracious to a stranger and merciful with our words and our actions as it is to those that are closer to us. I struggle with it. I do all the time. Um, I suppose it's it's the enemy we all have to deal with. Um, anyway, I, I, I didn't know for sure what I should share or what I would share. Um, I thought of many things in the past and thought, well, um, there's, there's testimonies I've shared often before or at times before that most of you have heard. Um, anyway, so just maybe a few instances of, of answered prayer, one, one maybe being uh, in the past, when I was a young man, I'd say even before I saw the kingdom of God more fully, and yet I believed there was a God. Um, it, anyway, me, me and my older brothers, we, we, we lived in... Kind of, kind of lived in a separate house from our parents, or we bunked in a separate house. So, my my older brothers got into smoking cigarettes and stuff like that when I was 13, 14, and eventually they they got me into it. I was proud enough, you know. I I told them I was never gonna buy any. I just, you know, they they got me hooked though, and and I ended up 
be it being hooked to to cigarettes for years and I I remember later when when I started struggling and and wanting to be free of it knowing it had a hold of me when I when I cry out to God even with a even with a cigarette in my in between my fingers like oh God please you know help me I need help and uh I'd say like a, a, a two year span where I'd struggle with it and so much so much so where I'd go free of it for a while and then I'd end up I'd end up uh, at a store where they sell them and I'd end up walking out of the store with some you know and just just like an addict like getting getting one in between my lips as quick as I could but then more than once this happened I I just um, I, I do that and then I regret it immediately like, oh I'm sorry and, and just take the whole package and just crunch them there goes three dollars just throw them out throw them away but and I had to think like some people would just would say well any, any addict goes through this struggle but, but I, I still like and, and you have to deal with an addiction like that and you you I'm, I'm sure that the modern world has a way to to explain it without God in it and so on but but I thank the Lord that he did he did deliver me and and afterward you know I got to a place where all my comrades around me could be um, smoking cigarettes and even offer one to me and I wouldn't I wouldn't take it. I'm like, I, I can take it, but I'm going to put it under my feet. You know? Um, anyway. So that's that for that. Uh, another instance just just this week, I, I um, took Joe Yoder to Springfield again this week with my bus, being as I've got the, the uh, wheelchair lift on it. And I, I dropped him off where he wanted to go or needed to go. And when they were ready to leave again, I, I dropped the lift. And we, we got him on the lift. I started it up, you know, with just our button control. And it started going up partway, and it stopped. And I was stuck. I mean, we you, usually, I mean, it, it's happened before. There's all kinds of sensors and stuff on it, so I started trying to see if there's some obstruction somewhere and cleaning it out and wiggling on this and banging on that and and nothing helped. And I felt like I was letting them down here. They were depending on me and I didn't... I couldn't even drive my bus away with the wheelchair lift out and I didn't know where to go to... To, to get any question, any any answers on it, or who would come and fix it for me, and all of these kind of things, and how was I going to get Joe off of there? And anyway, I kind of didn't know what else to do anymore, and finally I was like, God, just help me. <laughs> anyway, just a quick little prayer, and the the next one of the next moves I made was I unplugged the. Uh, I think it's the sensor wires just unplugged it completely and replugged it back together and it worked. <laughs> Here again, well, it's just something mechanical. I just had to know what, but I was like, praise the Lord. <laughs> so after so part partly maybe my just my uh not being diligent with my equipment. So after I got home, I'm like, I need to know more about my equipment. What's going on where? And so since then, I figured out I can actually do this thing manually if something like that does malfunction, um, which I hadn't figured out before. So now if it should happen again where my wiring fails, I wouldn't be stuck. Uh, anyway, but praise the Lord. Well, I greet you all in the name of Jesus. My name is Alec Faber um, from Texas. And um, I 
as I considered what the Lord has revealed to me and I realized that He really hasn't revealed it to me in the sense as it's, He's revealed it to us. As I've considered, we declared, as Brother Duane said, we declare we to you that ye also may have fellowship with us and our fellowship is with the Father and the Son, Jesus Christ, is that the revelation is the fellowship. And as um, we've been going through Ephesians at home and what I came to see today and be able to testify is that I saw the Lord Jesus Christ today through y'all. As it says in Ephesians chapter 1 is that the Father has put Christ as the head. He is the head over the assembly which is His body. The fullness of Him which is filling all in all. You know, what would I give today if I actually could see the Lord Jesus today and listen to His words, kiss Him, hold His hand in the bond of peace, It's like you would consider the, you know, what type of things that I would change, and yeah. as I considered the decidedness of meeting the the judge of all the earth. The brother brother Paul declared with the other apostles that, as it says in Ephesians nine, to cause all to see the fellowship of the secret that hath been hid from the ages in God. That through the assembly there be the revelation of Jesus Christ, who is the manifold wisdom of God. As it says in another in another place in Ephesians, that that the Father of the glory may give to you a spirit of wisdom. Give to you, plural, a revelation and a recognition of Him. And so as I consider, as it, our Lord said in the Sermon on the Mount, that says, Happy the clean in heart, because they shall see God. And as we read earlier in Hebrews, that in the pursuit of peace with all, and the separation apart from which no one shall see God. Looking diligently over, lest anyone be failing of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up may give you trouble, and through this many may defiled. Many. And so as I considered, also that's something that I can give a witness to, is that, I mean, so often just bitterness and because we can't learn how to get along and and be diligently forgiving and loving one another and being careful and not seeking our own opinions but seeking carefully to press our way through our revelation of the Lord Jesus and the scriptures that we start building on a foundation that's different from Jesus Christ Himself and the Twelve Apostles. And what Brother Josiah has really helped teach my heart in the last couple of weeks is that as I've struggled to pursue my own individualistic religion of obeying Jesus and loving Him in prayers and fastings and patiently bearing that I've found a lot of discouragement and becoming worn in, in those disciplines. 
But Brother Josiah helped me to see that when Jesus Christ was laying down His life, He was doing it for the church. He was doing it for us. And then He said that it was better for Him to go away and sit at the right hand of the Father that His Spirit may come and dwell in us. And so, you know, He says, like, hey, if you have a quarrel with your brother, leave your gift at the altar and go. Leave the, the place of worship and go and be reconciled with your brother. Because bitterness destroys the bond of peace. And so... Um, so when I see you my heart is filled with joy and love as as, as time and separation has come, I don't get to see y'all. And so, but the my love for y'all is enlarged and renewed every time I see y'all. And as I considered that I have something worthy to live for. I'm now, rather than just seeing Jesus living out this life of prayer and disciplines, I'm now seeing what He was looking at. Y'all. That He might rec reconcile into one body. And so... You know, the glory of Him, as it says in Ephesians 3.21, is the glory of God is shown through the assembly. And so I... pray that, as Brother Paul prayed, that when I see your face every time, that I may see Jesus. And I believe that's what, as we considered friendly fire and destroying the image of God, but even in realizing that, you know, it's in Genesis... He said, let us create man or humanity or mankind in our image. It's us, not me, not you, individualistically, but we together. We reflect the image of God. And so I, I'm so glad to be able to be a, a testifier that I will get to see God in his different faces. But as we live in the bond of peace and we're pursuing that peace and um, and it's a great, every, uh, great privilege and honor that I get to come here and that whatever body part that I am, you know, it's, it's that there are many members but one body that it's like when, this time that we assemble together, the Lord Jesus starts coming together. And that in our submitting to one another, 
as we obey the commandments of Jesus and the commandments of the apostles and submitting to God's way of order and obedience and fear and love is that the Lord Jesus is revealed. And so that makes my heart so excited and happy. And so I uh, just uh, want to bless y'all and appreciate everything. And But more importantly, that I got to see Jesus today. God bless you.